Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And ping! On you, Husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. With summer here, pleasure driving time has arrived. There are more daylight hours, nice weather, and the fine outlook of the summer countryside. If you are on the highways or the road anywhere these summer days, be especially careful. There will be the inevitable traffic tie-ups and delays, the reckless drivers, the slow drivers, and the innumerable other incidents that can make warm weather driving so unpleasant and hazardous. Don't let your good spirits bubble over into unsafe speeds. When you're driving at high speeds, you can't stop as fast, can't control steering as well, and your eyes can't detect as clearly fast-moving hazards that seem to whiz past your car. So drive slower. You may arrive at your destination a little later, but your chances of getting there are better. When you're driving in the country, take it easy and enjoy your ride. Drive carefully and make this your best summer ever. This message is brought to you as a public service. The Lazy Dollar was one of the smaller cafes in Dawson patronized by the rougher element. The Northwest Mounted kept a close watch on it because of the many fights that took place there. The customers paid no attention to the loud voices of the two men near the door. Sure, I've been watching you, and I've got good reason to. Well, I say you're a yellow crack, and I ain't the proof. But when the men went for their guns, the cafe was shocked into silence. No! Only one shot was fired. One of the men crumpled to the floor, and the other ran out the open door. Hey, somebody go get a doctor. Joe, the bartender, hurried to the fallen man and quickly dispatched two messengers, one for the police and the other for a doctor. In less than ten minutes, Sergeant Preston, Constable Downey, and Dr. Moran reached the cafe. Stand back, everyone, and give Doc some room. Come on, do what the sergeant says. Back here. Are you alive, Doc? Yes. This isn't the first bullet to puncture his ornery hide. Scar Dolan. Scar's a good name for him. That's no way to talk about a man lying helpless and unconscious. You may like him. I don't. He's a mean one. Of course, the mean ones never seem to die. Who shot him, Joan? Bill Barton. Bill Barton? I'm just as surprised as you are, Constable. Bill doesn't go in for gunplay. He did tonight. What was it all about? Well, I don't know for sure. Bill and Scar were having an argument. All of a sudden, we heard a shot, and there was Bill with his gun in his hand, and Scar dropped to the floor. You mean Bill drew first? He must have. You can see. Scar's gun isn't all the way out of its holster. What did Bill do after he fired the shot? Ran out. You didn't try to stop him? <laughs> no use. He had a horse outside, and he rode toward the Klondike. I ran after him as far as the river, and I saw him heading up the Klondike Trail. Say, his pa's got a mine up that way. It's on Rainbow Creek. I know. But I doubt if Bill would go there, Sergeant. He and his father split up nearly a year ago. They never speak to each other. Yeah, but he was brought up on Rainbow Creek. He knows the country around there. There's his cousin, too, Ned Barton. Bill's still friendly with him. That works at the mine? Yeah. He and Bill were raised like butters. You're going to charge Bill with murder, aren't you, Sergeant? Perhaps. If Scar dies... He won't. Too mean. You're sure, Doc? I'm sure. He'll be laid up for a while, but he'll live. We'd better fix up a stretch and have him taken home. Will you take charge here, Jim? Right. I'll saddle Blackie and get King and see if I can pick up Bill's trail. Where'd he live? A palace hotel. I'll find something that belonged to him to give King the scent. See you later, Jim. All right, Sergeant. Come on, boys. Break it up now. Let's just drive. Oh, 
boy. Later that night, Bill Barton dismounted in a grove of trees behind the rambling log cabin where his father and his cousin lived. He looked around cautiously and then ran to an open window toward the rear of the cabin. Ned. What? Who's there? It's Bill. Bill? What do you want? I've got to talk with you. What if Uncle John hears us? He told you he'd go for a shotgun if he ever saw you around here again. Ned! He's awake, too. What, Uncle John? Did we come back from Dawson yet? No, sir. I thought I heard you talking to someone. Well, no, sir. Well, I'm sorry. Hey, don't suppose Rick will be back until tomorrow morning. Not to be bringing the Mountie with him? No, sir. Well, I'm sorry to have waited you. That's all right. What's he mean, bringing the Mountie with him? We've had two robberies in the last ten days. I heard about the first one. There was another last night. Mounties. Still, I've got to talk to you. Go around to the kitchen door. I'll let you in there. Make it fast. Bill Barton headed for the kitchen door, alert for any sign of life in the sleeping camp. There was none waited at the kitchen door. A light showed in the kitchen. A moment later, the door opened. Come in. What's the matter? You in trouble? I I think I've killed a man. Hey. It wasn't my fault. He grew first. If his gun hadn't stuck in its holster, I'd be dead. I had to shoot. Self-defense. Uh, I don't know whether I can make anybody believe that. Who was it? Scar Dolan. Huh? You know him. I know who he is. A gambler. He's crooked. I think he and another ten horn called Magruder are the men who robbed Dad Sluices a week ago. Well, what makes you think that? Because right after it happened, they started spending a lot of money. I had a good look at the dust they were pouring out. It had the same slight greenish tinge all the rainbow dust has. Uncle John seems to think it's someone connected with the mine who's responsible for the robberies. It could be. Well, what do you want me to do, Bill? I'll do anything I can. You know how grateful I am. After all, you'd never have had any trouble with your father if you hadn't taken that money from the safe to pay my gambling debts. Oh, forget it. I should have gone to Uncle John and told him... What that... good would that have done? Took enough to grub stake my friend Link Davis at the same time, you remember? Left my note for the whole amount. But you also should remember. The note paid off. Dad and I are quit. Well, these get along better separated. If you were still friendly, you could stay here. I take it you want to hide out for a while. No, no, not here. I'm heading for the cave where we used to play when we were kids. The one behind the waterfall. The head of the rainbow. I see. Well, what do you want me to do? Just keep me informed as to what happens. Oh, and bring me some grub now and then. I have only enough in my saddlebags for a few days. Depend on me. Hey, there's someone riding up. And you're stepping out in front. It could be Rick with a mounty. Or just a mounty after me. My horse is in the grove. I'll get away all right. Don't worry. I'll see you later. Good luck. So you shot Scar Dolan. You'll need good luck, Bill. Ned hurried through the house, the front door, and opened it. Rick Allen, the foreman of the mine, was studying the ground in front of the cabin. What are you doing, Rick? Oh, hello, Ned. You had any visitors tonight? Why, no. I thought you might have. Where's the money you were supposed to bring back with you? I didn't get to headquarters. Something came up. Uncle John won't like you not doing what you were supposed to. I'll explain to him in the morning. Where are you going? Down past the mine. Have a look around. See you in the morning. Steady. Get up there. He didn't say anything about Bill. But he followed him from Dawson. That's what he was looking for out in front of Hope Prince. A sign Bill had stopped here. Well, the best thing for me is to get back to bed and keep my mouth shut. King picked up Bill Barton's trail outside of Dawson and followed it along the Klondike and up the Rainbow straight to the kitchen door of the Barton cabin in the mining camp. Oh, boy, King. Oh, boy. <laughs> then he wanted to go on, but the sergeant stopped him. Hold it, King. I understand, fella. He's been here and he's gone. I want to have a talk with his father before we leave here. We'd better knock at the front door. Come on, Bucky. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It was John Barton who opened the door. Why, Sergeant Preston and King. Hello, John. Come in, come in. Well, didn't Rick come back with you? Rick? Your foreman, Rick Allen? Yes. He was supposed to go to headquarters and report two gold robberies we've had. Well, he hadn't shown up at headquarters, and I left. That's mighty strange. How much has been stolen? 
It's hard to tell. The dust hadn't been weighed. But I'd say at least 5,000 altogether. Any suspects? I still think it was one of the men, with an accomplice, perhaps, to get the dust away from here. Well, John, I'll see that the constable sent out here to make a thorough investigation. Well, I'm working on another case at the moment, and this one concerns you, too. How's that? Has your son been here tonight? Bill? No. I don't talk about it, but I thought everyone knew. I know you've had a quarrel. As far as I'm concerned, he's no son of mine. Would you still say that if you found out he was in trouble? Eh? What, the... what sort of trouble? There was a shooting in the Lazy Dollar this evening. And he was mixed up in it. Eh? So that's what he's come to. You don't think as badly of Bill as you let on. Now, Sergeant, you can't think so much of him yourself if you're here to arrest him. I didn't say I was. Can I talked with Ned. Ned doesn't know any more about Bill than I do. Still, I'd like to speak with him. There's no reason why you shouldn't, sir. Oh, hello, Ned. Been listening? A little. Bill involved in a shooting? Yes. You didn't say murder. No, the man who was shot won't die. But you're looking for Bill, and if you find him, you'll take him into custody. That's correct, Ned. I can't tell you anything about him. He was here tonight. He wouldn't dare come here. King trailed him to your kitchen door. Well, he didn't come inside. Be sure of that. Ned? I can't tell you anything about Bill. Which means you won't. Well, it doesn't matter. King will find him. And you both should be happy to know that Bill hasn't killed anyone. Come on, King. Oh, oh. oh I won't forget about that robbery investigation, John. Of course, Rick may bring back a constable from Dawson. He didn't. What's that? Rick got back about half an hour ago and he was alone. Why didn't you call me? He said he'd talk to you tomorrow morning and then he rode on up the trail. That's mighty strange. Well, I'm heading up the trail myself. I may run into him. Good night. Good night. Good night, Sergeant. Ready, Blanky. Go on, King. Follow the scent. Come on, Blanky. The scent King followed led him along a wooded ridge behind the mining camp, but eventually back to the trail that ran along the banks of the rainbow. This continued on to the source of the stream a spring that gushed from a cliff wall and fell a hundred feet to the creek bed. King led the sergeant straight to the waterfall. Oh, buggy, oh, boy. The dog stood motionless, looking through the spray and growling low in his throat. The sergeant could see there was an opening in the rock wall behind the waterfall. A cave. All right, King, steady. Let's see what's inside. King, still growling, stayed close to his master's side. The sergeant ducked through the spray and entered the cave. Ahead, there was a faint, ruddy glow. The remains of a campfire, King. And a few seconds later, they saw a man lying close to the glowing embers. A patch of red showing on his shirt. Shot. But this isn't Bill Barton, it's Rick Allen. He isn't dead, though, and the wound's high in the chest. There's a chance of saving his life. continue our adventure in just a moment. It's a hit! There it goes into the right field stands! It's a homer! Oh, boy, kids, what fun it is at the ballpark! Come on out to the game! Come now as guest of a major or minor league team! It's your chance to get free baseball tickets! If you are 12 years or younger, you can see a major or minor league baseball game... Free with a paying adult like mom or dad. Bring the whole family and make a big day of it. This very day, or first thing tomorrow morning, you can get a free baseball ticket. No mailing, no waiting. It's right inside a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry to get your free baseball ticket in the special package of Quaker Puff Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Now to continue. The sergeant worked fast, managing the wounded man, wrapping him in blankets, and building up the fire from a small pile of firewood in the cave. But a full hour had passed before Rick opened his eyes. Well, Sergeant Preston. Yes, Rick. Who shot you? 
I'm not sure. Was it Bill Barton? It couldn't have been. He was gone when I got here. There's a note in my boot top. Read it. All right. Ned, thought of a better place over the hills and far away. We'll keep in touch. Bill. Found a note stuck up on a rock ledge. Bill was gone. Well, if he didn't shoot you, who did? I think it was Magruder. Magruder? The gambler? Yeah, listen, Sergeant. We've had a couple of robberies. I know. I think Magruder and Scar Dolan had something to do with them. Why, Rick? I just caught sight of them hanging around the camp. Tonight I was in Dawson. I left my horse at the livery stable. I was on my way to your headquarters to report the robberies. I was passing the lazy dollar when... When Bill shot Scar. Yeah, I saw him riding away. Stuck around long enough to find out Scar wouldn't die. Then took off after Bill. What for? Tell him he wasn't a murderer. Persuade him to give himself up. Remembered his talking about this place here. Figured he might come here when he wasn't at our camp. You followed Bill and Magruder Don't followed you. I think Magruder was after me. Huh? I think he wanted to kill Bill. Thought I was Bill when he shot. Wanted to finish the job Scar messed up. Well, why should they want to kill Bill? The robberies. Maybe he has proof they stole the gold. You sure it was Magruder who shot him? No, it was a big man, though. Bigger than Bill. Magruder is big. We can't arrest him on that evidence. Fine, Bill. Over the hills and far away. He must know why Scar and Magruder are after him. Find him. Rick, I must stay here with you until you're stronger. Tomorrow, I'll get a wagon from the mine and take you into Dawson, the hospital. The bullet in your chest must be removed. After that, I'll start looking for Bill again. All right, Sergeant. You know your business. It was late the following afternoon before Rick was delivered safely to the hospital in Dawson. But on the way into town, the sergeant questioned Ned Barton about the note Bill had left for him. I have no idea what the note means, Sergeant. His life may be in real danger, Ned. Well, I hope you can find him, but... Over the hills and far away. It probably means that he's left the Yukon. It's possible, yes. Get up there. When Rick had been pronounced out of danger and the sergeant was free to continue his investigation, he conferred with Constable Downey. Jim, do you know where Magruder is? He was at Scar's cabin when I dropped in there half an hour ago. Want me to keep an eye on him? Every minute. Don't let anything else interfere with it. We want a complete record of every place he goes and everyone he talks to. Right. What are these papers? They belong to Bill Barton. Huh? I picked them up in his room at the palace. Anything important? Letters and receipts. There's a deed to a claim on Lost River. This? Yes. He owns it in partnership with someone with the name of Link Davis. Where is Lost River? Over the hills. A long way. And far away. What? Over the hills and far away. That was the phrase in Bill's notes. If this Link Davis is a good friend... His best friend, Sergeant. There's a letter here from him. Bill Grubstake didn't hear this. Claims turned out to be a rich one, and Davis wants Bill to come up there and help him work it. Says here, uh, I built a large cabin up on the ridge above the river. That's where I'm going, Jim. Sounds like a good idea. I'll show you how to get there on the map. You ought to be able to make it by tomorrow night. No, until I get back. I know, Magruder. I'll stick to him like the paper on the wall. All right, let's have a look at the map. continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, picture yourself at the ball game right now. The bases are loaded with two outs. The star hitter steps up and you see him in person. You get the thrill of seeing him hit that homer. Get in on the fun. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Yes, you can go free if you are 12 years or younger and bring a paying adult like mom or dad. It's so easy to get a free baseball ticket. It's right inside a package of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free tickets in Quaker Paco 10. The tickets tell you the names of the teams and the dates. Bring the whole family and have the time of your lives at the ballpark. Remember, no mailing, no waiting. You can get as many free baseball tickets as you want. They're inside packages of Quaker Puff wheat or Puff rice... Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Get yours right away. Now to continue. It was a long, hard trip to Lost River through country that was practically wilderness. It was long after dark the following night when the sergeant reached Link Davis's cabin. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. The 
Willie. Easy does it. The sergeant looked in the window of the cabin. That was a good hunch, King. He said, he and his partner are having supper. Come on, man. Sergeant Preston. Good evening, Bill. Uh, come to arrest me for murder. There's been no murder. This car will be up and around in a few days. There. I told you it was crazy to run away and hide when you weren't sure. Now, you tell the sergeant everything you've told me, and the whole business will be straightened out. All right. May I have some supper while I'm listening, Davis? Sure thing. Sit right down here. All right. Bill told the sergeant his story. And afterwards, the sergeant described the attack which had been made on Rick Allen. When he had finished... Poor old Rick. I thought he might be mixed up with the robbery just because... Hey, look at King. Who's coming? Two men coming up the hill. The moon's full on their faces. One of them's Magruder. Sergeant. The other one is Ned. Get back from the window. Bill, what connection could there be between Magruder and Ned... I don't know. Of course, Ned likes to gamble. Paid his debt a year ago. Magruder makes his living at the gambler. You, your father, Rick, all of you believe there must be someone inside the camp connected with the gold robbery. Not Ned. Why else would he be coming up here? Well, to tell me that I'm not a murderer. With Magruder? It's more likely to commit murder. No. It's a good thing you arrived before them, Sergeant. They won't try anything when they see you. Ned couldn't be a party to what you're suggesting. Suppose we find out, though. How? Take and I'll step out in the kitchen. I'll leave the door open a little so I can both see and hear. My gun will be ready. That's a good idea. Give them enough rope and they'll hang themselves. I'm sure you're wrong. If you're sure, you shouldn't mind putting Ned to the test. All right. You'll see. Come on. They're nearly here. Sit down. Uh, Ned, good. It can't be true. We'll see. Go ahead. Stop with your hands. Hey, Ned, shut up. Will you let them have it here? No. We don't want the cabin messed up. We'll march them down to the bank of the creek. On your feet, you two. You must be crazy, Ned. Why should you want to kill me? My reasons are my business. Because Bill knows that you and Scar and Magruder were responsible for the robberies at the mine. No. He never suspected me of having any part in them until this minute. I have a better reason. We've been good friends, Ned. <laughs> Have we? Always. Listen, I want your father's mind. And lately I've begun to realize that in spite of the way he talks, he'll never disown you. That's why I paid Scar to pick a fight with you. That's why I sent Mac to get you at the cave. Both of them bungled. Now I'm going to make sure the job is done well. Get up. No. I said get up. Hey, Ned, there's an extra place on that table. Someone else has been eating here. That's right, hey, well, I'm getting out of here. Sergeant Preston. Oh. Ned's shot was wide. The sergeant's caught Ned in the shoulder. He whirled as if to run, staggered and hit his head on the door jam. He fell to the floor. You killed him, Sergeant. I don't think so. My bullet hit his shoulder. He hit his head as he fell. Shall we go after Mac? We won't have to. Constable Downey's been following Magruder since yesterday afternoon, and he has him. Inside, Magruder. You killed him, Sergeant. But look, he planned this whole deal. You heard what he said? You accepted pay to commit murder. No, he only promised it. That, that is a... Never mind. You're under arrest. I must warn you, anything you say will be taken down and may be used as evidence against you. What's more, nothing you say can help your case now. You and Scar and Ned are going to jail for robbery and attempted murder. It was three days later in Dawson that Bill received a message asking him to come to the sergeant's office. When he opened the door, he found his father with the sergeant. Hello, Bill. Hello, sergeant. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. I've been having a long talk with the sergeant. And now I have everything straightened out in my mind. I see. I'm glad to hear your claim. You as a lynx has turned out so well. We've been offered 50000 for it. We're going to sell. Are you? Well, in that case... Bill, as you know, Rick will be laid up in the hospital for some time. I, uh, I need someone to help me. And, uh, would, you, would you consider being my foreman? Uh, you, you mean it? I mean, 
I mean it with all my heart. Why, sure. Sure, I'll take the job. That's, that's fine. That's, that's wonderful. That's... Suddenly, it'll be good to have you home again. It'll be good to be home. Well, then let's go. But first, Sergeant, there, there are no words. I've been proud, and my pride has blinded me. You've made me see clearly, though, that Bill and I, well, partners, that's what we should be, equal partners. And Sergeant, I, I want to thank you. Shake your hand. Of course, Don. I'll shake hands with your new partner. Bill? We'll get along, Dad. I'm sure of that. Well, King, this case is closed. <laughs> Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Here's a mutual note for you. Mutual is a network that has programs you can enjoy throughout the week. If you like question and answer fun, then you'll find there are all sorts of quiz programs you can listen to on Mutual. You can try and outguess the contestants and see if you know the right answer before they do. Even if you don't know, it's loads of fun listening to others. And you can learn a lot at the same time, too. And some of you boys and girls probably have favorite songs and favorite singers that you like to listen to. When you tune into Mutual, you'll hear many of the stars you like best, singing and playing the kind of music you enjoy most. Don't forget, too, there are programs of outdoor adventure and others of barn dance music and jamboree. There's plenty of good listening waiting for you on your Mutual dial. Tune in every weekday afternoon for Mutual's famous programs, especially designed for adventure lovers. And remember to listen other times as well for different kinds of programs you like over most of these stations. When a young friend disappeared, Sergeant Preston set out with Yukon King and the constable to find him. The trail led to a prospector's cabin a few miles from town. Look, on the floor, the old prospector. He's been murdered. Now we must find Fred Olsen. The circumstances indicated that Preston's friend was a murderer. What will happen when Sergeant Preston and King find Fred Olsen and face guns in the hands of desperate men who are with him? Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. Thank you.